Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a review and final diagnosis on the Monterey Bay Knives Min Pin. This is a knife that I was really excited to pick up because I really like Ray Laconico design. Ray Laconico being a custom knife maker who makes very EDC friendly designs uh, that are rapidly um, adaptable to a production format. Kaiser has done a great job over the years manufacturing some of his designs and now Ray has gone with some other uh, groups including Mass Drop and now this group Monterey Bay Knives. Monterey Bay Knives being run by Sanford Owen, the owner of Carmel Cutlery, <clears throat> as a new means of creating high-end production pieces from some of the custom makers that Mr. Owen likes. This is their first outing, the Min Pin. Go back and watch my unboxing video for some of the general specs and information on this knife. Long story short is, it's about a 3-inch blade of S35VN with titanium handles, a carbon fiber backspacer, and a Chinese production. Now, I wanted to just go ahead and talk about my experience with the knife uh, and then just give me give my final diagnosis. I'm going to try to tailor these so it's not just a regurgitation of the same uh, unboxing video. So I've been carrying this now for a couple of weeks and I have really been enjoying it. It is a small knife, it is easy to carry, and it does the job just fine. It is a nice little piece of S35VN that came very sharp. Uh, and the handle has worked very well in and out of the pocket. Even though I have larger hands, this small knife does give me a full four finger grip uh, where this part goes right in between those two fingers and it's quite nice. So I have really enjoyed that. The overall small size was something that was appealing to me. I've been trying to go a little bit slimmer with some of my carries simply because there's really not a need for huge knives, but I've found that perhaps this three inches is a bit too small for my overall carry. I'm going to go ahead and break this knife down anatomically and talk about each of the parts and how I've enjoyed using it. Let's talk about the blade first. This came in S35VN. At a price point of $225, I would have really liked to have seen M390 on this. I think that in the current market, there are plenty of S35VN knives, especially Chinese-produced S35VN. Uh, and, you know, I did the comparison with the Mass Drop Keen, and it's just hard to justify spending 90 more dollars on a knife with the exact same blade steel. I would really have liked to have seen that be a higher end steel for that price point. However, I do love the blade shape. I really like this clip point design. I think it's beautiful. I think it is beautifully done. The finish work is spectacular. It is a beautiful satin finish with a hand rubbed flat. The Monterey Bay Knives logo is very tasteful uh, and very clean looking. Uh, there is not a steel designation on this. I might have liked to see that. Uh, it's sort of a catch-22. Uh, you could hide it somewhere like in here so that it's not always showing, but I also like clean blades. Uh, but it's, it's hard to say. On some of these knives, someone can get easily confused and call it M390 when it's really S35. So I think it's important to do that. Also, it's not serialized. I don't really mind that either, but uh, perhaps if this were to be a limited production, it might need to be serialized. The one thing about the uh, blade uh, that I really don't like is the flipper tab. I just need to be perfectly honest with you. The flipper tab is far too sharp. Um, the problem is that if you get anywhere near the lock bar with your finger trying to open this thing, it becomes, the, the flipper tab becomes an index finger grinder. It's so sharp. If I put my finger on here, there's no out. There's no way that's going to open. Uh, and it just pushes really hard into the meat of the finger. And I developed a bruise there from the first couple of days. I would have liked to have seen this be a little bit more rounded off. Uh, not quite as sharp, or at least somehow that uh, when you touch the lock bar, it doesn't generate so much compression there. Uh, every person that I handed this knife to really said that it hurt their finger uh, because they weren't able to figure out how to hold it the right way right off the bat. Now I have, and it works just fine uh, when you figure that out, but it's a bit of an annoyance in that way. Uh, moving back to the pivot, this thing runs on ball bearings. This is broken in so nicely. This came much smoother than the Keen fresh out of the box and it broke in to be very, very smooth. I did disassemble this knife, and uh, internally it runs on race bearings, uh, so the bearings are on steel washers, not on titanium, so that's a nice touch for the construction. 
Uh, I added a little bit of oil to the pivot just because that's what I always do when I maintain my knives. And that was kind of a mistake because what that has generated is a little bit of lock stick. And that's because there's some oil that got on the face uh, right here. I've cleaned it a couple of times now and you know, I just can't, I can't seem to get rid of 100% of the stick. It lasts for a little while and I bring out my pencil and I do a little painting like this right on that area where I think it is and it goes away. And the, so the lock is gone now. The lock stick is gone now, but uh, it will come back eventually. I talked to Sanford about this and he did offer to replace the knife and offer to have me send it back to him so he could take a look at it. I may end up sending it back to him so he can take a look and make sure that nothing is going wrong with the lock face. I took this down, took some pictures for him. He's been very receptive. What he wants to do is generate a quality product. This is his very first outing and so I offer this up only as a constructive criticism so that we can get better knives. He did say that uh, he wanted to keep the design of the Laconico uh, without the uh, lock bar insert. He wanted to keep that true to the custom model so that there was no insert. However, uh, in the production knife world, the variances are a little bit wider than they are in the custom world. You can't custom tailor the lock bar to the blade every time. And so uh, perhaps we've discovered that going mass production would require lock bar inserts to prevent these types of problems. Even in the setting of getting a little oil on a steel on steel lock bar insert, it doesn't generate the lock stick that I have felt with this one. It's not a deal breaker amount of lock stick, but it's there. And if we have to detract points from somewhere, you know, that's something to talk about. Moving back to the handles, I have loved these handles. This is one of my favorite finishes that I've ever seen on most knives. I mean, this orange peel is so nice. I really want to get more knives with a deep, heavy orange peel finish because this hides wear so well. I've bumped and scratched this thing up, up against things and it shows absolutely no wear. I love the orange peel finish. They absolutely nailed it with the finish work on this. I really like the speed holes in the blade. It shows, or on the handle, it shows you the blade through the handle. And uh, they're evenly spaced and evenly sized and that just suits my OCD quite well. And they line up with the pivot screw that just looks to be the same diameter overall. It's very pleasing to the eye, this overall shape. As I mentioned before, the ergonomics are very good. Even for my large hands, I get three fingers here and one finger here and my thumb rests right there. I do wish there was a bit more of a forward choil area, but that's just because I have fat fingers. You really can choke up a little bit and uh, hold it just like that if you need to. It's excellent in the draw cut configuration. That's where the clip point blade shape is really great. I enjoy that a lot. The backspacer has actually been changed since this. This was the first run right here where it had unidirectional carbon fiber. It was, it's not unidirectional, it's just this is the end cut. Now it's been sort of side cut and it's got a different pattern and it looks a little bit nicer than this. Easier to tell that it's carbon fiber, but I love that they did do carbon fiber and a short length back, backspacer like this. I appreciate that the screws go all the way through for a strong construction like that. I really like when knives are built this way. The pocket clip is okay. Uh, go and look at my buddy Adam Purvis. He's starting to make some Mokutai and Zerkutai clips for the Min Pin. Highly recommended. I'll leave a link to that down below in the video. Uh, this clip is just okay. There's not quite enough spring. It's not quite tall enough. It works okay, but it's not uh, not a perfect clip. Uh, this is just begging for aftermarket stuff. I know Adam Purvis is getting on it right now. And so what is sort of my final diagnosis on the Min Pin? Well, I'm going to say that the final diagnosis is growing pains. And that's because this is the first knife from a new company. I will say it is an excellent effort. This knife, I would give it, if it was a numerical score, a 9 out of 10. There are some problems with the knife. Uh, it has a little bit of lock stick from the fact that I got oil on the lock face and I need to just keep cleaning it. Um, I think that that could be remedied by not having, uh, by having a steel lock bar insert. Um, I think that the flipper tab is a bit sharp. Uh, another thing I need to mention is that this knife is made by an unnamed Chinese company, and I think some people are very uncomfortable that the maker is not named. So aside from a few small issues, I think this knife is pretty well done. 
Uh, I think that I will be excited to see what comes out of Monterey Bay Knives. So let me know what you guys think down below. And as always, take care.